What is going on guys? It is your boy Cash and I apologize it's been so long. It's been exactly five days since a KC video and I, I just apologize for that. That's why there's no fancy intro here. It's just me coming straight to your face. Hi face. You're looking good today. You're looking good. I see you. Did you, did you cut your hair? Yeah, I know it looks terrible. Anyway, the only reason why I just wanted to get back into the mix is just it's been so long I feel like I, I don't like leaving games for so long Maybe like a day or two while I do another game But I just been getting swamped with work most of you guys don't care about that But I, I just wanted to say like I'm not ignoring the game I just I literally can only log on and do my dailies I haven't had a day off in almost seven days tomorrow will be my last Day and then I get a day off after that and you'll probably see some more activity but right now it is time for some Arian Dell I really like this character I like her design she's like a harpist she is the headmistress as you can see here the headmistress of the magic academy in the Grand Duchy of Delhart what does that mean I don't know because I don't pay attention to the story whatsoever but what it's really cool to note is that you know they're starting to branch out their story a little bit you have Sid Nicholas guarding her so it's like more into what Sid is doing and I feel like since Sid was like one of the earlier characters it's nice to see someone resonate with him but let's talk more about Amy Gandap so this is her level 4 state you know she's in all black as she's going to a funeral and she decides you know a funeral is you know just as good as you know a birth you know someone dies and their pain and suffering goes away and then she's like super rocker gets the black hair you know she goes like to a stylist she even puts some of that into her outfit but you guys aren't here for a little of that that's not what you guys are here for. you guys are here to figure out how to use this character and as you can see you know I, I, I may not have this character but I'm gonna help you out anyway by first looking at everything and going over everything by using my very 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 good ability to read yes <laughs> <laughs> my ability to read leader skill song of protection decreases support type allies damage taken by 20% now this is I would say one of the weaker leader skills just because most of the time you will not be running too many supports in your team comp you might be running one if you're running two usually that's kind of weird uh, the game's pretty much DPS focused at the moment in my opinion maybe one day in the future we'll have a full support team and she'll be a monster but for now we're gonna keep her out of the leader slot next up is her passive one silic recital i think that's silic if it's not shoot me anyway consumes magical harp to revive with 50 percent hp upon taking fatal damage if the caster has magical harp decreases all allies skill cooldowns by two turns upon reviving what's really important to know about her revive and most of the time when you see a revive on a passive is that they have a certain amount of times it can happen. Arian Dell, she's evolved. Let's say that. She has evolved. She has come and now she has ascended the support range. She is the head mistress of the Magic Academy. So she does not have a limit on how much she can do this. She actually can just keep reviving as long as she has a magical heart. So as I said when I first revealed her or when I first saw her is that she actually needs to be anti-revived. Like you have to do it or else she's going to keep reviving and when she does revive at least she's going to also help out with skill cooldowns across the, uh, on the allies he's going to always come back with 50 percent she's going to need a turn to get back to magical harp but still you have to keep that in check which is i think it's really cool i really like that aspect of her now let's go to the 60 passive magical harp obtains magical heart at the start of the wave changes an allies lower hp ratio to that of the castle at the end of the turn if the cast has magical harp we went over this a little bit in her Ariandel's dungeon and you might be familiar with it if you're used to claude when he first came out and he was a more regular used character pretty much if her hp is higher than the ally with the lowest hp then that lowest hp ally will be balanced to her hp it's a great way to get around heal blocks is a great way to get around being concerned or worried or having any types of care Oh, that character of mine is about to die. Cool, I like both of her passive, they're phenomenal. Frost Wave, inflicts damage in a cone, pretty much. And as we can see here, nothing happens. And then boom, at level six, which if you're able to farm this dungeon, you know, God bless, because <laughs> I can't, uh, you will now get the chance for a 40% chance to increase the target's debuff duration by one turn. Now this is obviously really, really cool. If you're familiar with Elizabeth, what this does is it allows you to extend debuffs and she's doing it in a cone so if those characters are stunned or have any bad boo-boos on them she will in a cone extend those debuffs really really cool because 
It can happen on a counter. You can multi-strike as well. So let's go over to the S2, which is the Frost Wind Song. And it restores the caster and adjacent allies, AKA in a cone, HP by 20% and obtains Magical Harp. So here's our Magical Harp. And we're gonna see if it gains any fun stuff. And it does. Right here on level six, we now recover 50% of the HP and removes all abnormal statuses. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And we also notice that it's on a three turn cooldown. Now, last but not least, the lovely skill three, Permafrost Epic. And we have a 30% chance to cast weapon erosion on all enemies. Increases all allies damage dealt by 5% for one turn. That is such, that's really low. If the caster has a magical harp, it is consumed to revive one ally and restore the HP by 5%. Well, first, before I say anything, let's look at it as we level it up. The HP and the damage goes up that you deal, so that's pretty good. Two turns, now it's up to 30%, 60% chance to cast weapon corrosion. If the caster has the magical harp, now it's two allies and they're coming back with 30% HP. So all in all, pretty good. I would prefer to actually level up this S three first making sure that the weapon corrosion lands on all enemies by the way which is really good and also increase their damage really really good and then last but not least the revive you definitely want the two revives just because in hectic situations would you rather revive one character or two it's just crisis controls when the going gets rough you want to be able to control a bad situation the best way you can so that's pretty much what that's about i'm maxing the s3 first as soon as i get the character just you know whenever that magical day happens this is so sad so for base stats i actually since i do not have the character i have to go to a review of the character and look at someone else's ariandel in order to get the base stats so here's someone's ariandel we're just going to go to the details and then boom we're going to use this to figure out the base stats of the character so as i've said and this is the first support i think that we've ever done on the channel so woo, ariandel for support so let's look at the base stats of an ssr support so for the base hp is going to be 7636 why did i say it like that Base defense is going to be 1192. Base attack you don't care about, but it happens to be 2863. And last but not least, the base speed, which is unique to Arian Dell, which with the glorious of math, I won't have to use my calculator because that looks like 527 minus 10, which is 517. She is really slow. And unfortunately in this game, most of the supports are slow. That's just how they make them in this game. I don't know if anyone has known that. I don't know if anybody told you, but yes, most supports in the game are actually slow. I do hate that. I wish that some supports were faster. I don't think any of them even break 550, if I'm being honest, I'm, I'm not checking, but I'm sure someone in the comments will be like, guess well, this technically this support. So yes, most of them are very slow. So you have to be making sure that they are tanky to survive the onslaught, especially if we're thinking about arena. They will Will definitely be taking damage before anything else so you want to get that HP high this person's HP is about 12,000 pretty much 1300 13,000 not 1300 because if you 1300 you definitely would die pretty much getting up to 13,000 definitely want to get a little bit higher there if you can because they're not going to go first they're going to be going relatively last in your team you want to make sure that the character stays alive and based on what we read in the skills let's look at the runes I'm just gonna use my Rue as an example because this this looks pretty good. <laughs> so obviously life is gonna be a big factor. You wanna raise that HP as much as you can possibly raise it. You wanna make sure, the reason why HP is very important is because of nukes. Characters in Arena, not so much in PvE because PvE sometimes the characters do ridiculous damage and it's pretty much on purpose like in when they lose composure or something like that, you're not meant to survive the attack, so they just made it crazy amounts of damage, so you're just gonna die. But in PvP, and sometimes in PvE, just slightly, the more HP you have, the better. If something is going to hit you for 10,000, you wanna have more than 10,000 HP. I think that should make sense. So make sure that you get some rune of life in there, or as I always mention, make sure that your sub stats is good. Then I have defense in there just because of the beautifulness 
which is probably not a word, but just because it's really good to have defense also, you know, you mitigate some of the damage, but it's not an end all be all. These are very old runes. I don't even, I can't even tell you at what month in the, the years that the, well, the year and few months that this game has been out. I have not re-ruined my rune in a long time. And just like Rue, since she does have a cone attack, I would say once you actually get her to have the level six S1, then you want to be looking for continuity. Well, not tr not triple attack continuity, please, por favor. But multi strike. You want to eventually then have the multi strike, extending debuffs that your other characters are going to be laying on, and keeping your character safe. Like when they have attack breaks and when they do have the weapon corrosion, you want to extend that to make sure that the enemy is doing at least the amount of damage as possible. That's pretty much her stick that's the only reason why our s1 has that is to extend the weapon corrosion as long as possible and of course with multi striking you eventually want to have revenge as encounter those are like the pretty much the only stats and even if you want to forego defense i would say that's 100 percent fine but you pretty much want to make sure that you have hp multi striking counter striking that's kind of where you want to live at and I always say this and I like I said I've never really done a support guide but pick one pick multi strike or pick counter why do I say that I think I can only show you in the transform rooms that's probably the only place that I can show you transform list here we go this is the best place to show you so one and two you're gonna want to just go HP the reason why I'm showing this is you know we got to do a special for the you know our first support or first support ever <laughs> No, I did a Sid guide, so boom, there it is. So the three and the four slot actually have multi-strike and counter-attack on it. Now you can jumble between having a little bit of both, but what's gonna happen is that you're not gonna be good at one or the other, you're gonna have a mix. I think my Sid, if I show you guys my Sid stats, he's like one of the best, cause he's like 50-50 on, on multi-strike, 50 on like counter, but like pretty close to both. I always lean towards counter. You're gonna get attacked from the enemy in PVE more often. There's usually a lot of AOE, there's a lot of cone attacks in PvE, so you kind of can put a counter based character or a character that you want to counter next to a character that's going to draw aggro. So that's kind of why counter is really good is because you can pretty much make sure that the boss always hits or has a very high chance to always hit that character. So that's why I like counter if you're going for PvE. And then multi strike, like I just said, that's more for PvP in my opinion, but you can still have a counter based character with the same way. and. If you position it correctly, then you'll get that counter attack happening all the time. Just to show you, um, well, let me show you. This is my Sid. I just wanted to show you guys as an example. Like his multi strike and counter attack is 50%. If you ever see me use Sid, which you probably never will, <laughs> he pretty much will counter all the time and he will multi strike all the time. It's, it's a pretty good chance for it to happen. This is relatively where I want him to be 13,000 HP. Pretty good, in my opinion. This is where I would probably have Ariandel but I would probably lower the multi-strike possibly and maybe have the counter a little bit higher for her because she has a cone and it's a little bit better. And I think that, especially if you wanted to use her in a dungeon, it's very likely that she's gonna take damage. I hope that makes sense to you guys. The 50-50 is really good, but if you don't wanna go 50-50, don't go like 20 something and 30. Just slide slide the, the turner, the knob or whatever, all the way on counter or slide it all the way to multi-strike and then just make sure that you're abusing that as much as possible. And worst case scenario, in my opinion, go for counter. And once again, another brand new. We haven't done a hero talent for a support, so I'm gonna have to use Sid since we just we just gave him so much praise. Let's look at the hero talents through Sid's eyes to see the hero talents of a support. Now the first one is, as you can see, counter attack, and then this one's gonna be multi strike. Another reason why I said you might want to just make that decision. So this is why my Sid has a lot of counter because he's getting 20% from his hero talents. So, and but you can also have 20% on multi-strike. This one is not that bad, is that you use your S3, you're guaranteed to give yourself a heal over time, a hot, <laughs> instead of a dot, it's a hot. So if you have a pretty spammable S3, it's not that bad, because then you can always get yourself to heal yourself. But I would prefer either counter or multi. Make your decision, lie your bed and sleep in it. Next, 52. For uh, fortified armor is pretty much what's gonna be. Stair is ability to brand. It's a you know it wouldn't actually be too bad on her because yes she can extend the brand, but it's a one turn brand, so it's not that good. A 54 increased damage dealt. Oh baby, DPS Arian Dell. Yeah, you're not doing this and you're not doing that. Very likely most people just go with the weekend to put a defense drop on the target, and with Arian Dell she can extend it. So 
pretty much a no-brainer there 56 is another one it's like you're probably not gonna go these two so you go with this lovely thing you get an HP shield 50% chance when you get attacked so obviously pretty good and another reason why you want to stack some HP it makes it very annoying when you're trying to snipe a target you try to snipe a support and then they get a shield based off their HP and if the HP is high enough you know that's a great thing too now you actually have to make somewhat of a decision decrease damage taken in arena decrease damage taken from bosses if you're obviously if you go in PvE you're gonna use this PvP is the gladiators technique then they have this now I've seen people use this it's not the worst thing in the world it's a nice little heal when you get attacked it, it procs every once in a while and when it does proc it's the heal is not that great so I think you're just gonna make your decision here in my opinion and of course 60 is going to be duh <laughs> so I hope that was helpful in some type of way shape or form I do apologize that I can't give you guys the widescreen shots because unlike other people I have not gotten this character on nightmare difficulty and I haven't cleared the big Papa Dapa either so I actually finally can kill Sid and I went to Nicholas and got destroyed um so you know I still got some work to do but it's fine I don't always beat these things on the first time they come around either oh my god I forgot to show the <laughs> got to show the skills oh I'm terrible she actually looks really weird like she looks dead in the eyes I like if you look to the left and you see her like she kind of looks like a loop but she looks really weird to me I don't know about what you guys think I think she looks weird she looks very weird to me so I like that move you know the little thing it's like ice though like an ice signal I don't know I don't know why she has ice can't figure it out but let's see the s3 in all its glory well not really all its glory it's minimal screen glory because <laughs> that's all i got ice ice sari ice sari looks pretty good though looks like she plays like a song and everyone gets it remember this is not even i don't even think this counts as an attack so it's just you know your allies get blessed the enemies like this is the worst song i've ever heard turn that off <laughs> And then at that point, they, they do less damage, you know, do the magic, through the power of song, as many would say. Well, because I know sometimes people get the advent, they were able to beat it, but they still don't know what to do with the character. That's why I decided to do Arian Del before I do Basker. Basker is obviously going to be next. Hope you guys look forward to that. And of course, you got to remember the most important thing in a day is every day at the casino is your lucky day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.